How are fundamentalists wrong about the Antichrist? They are mistaken about how the Antichrist will come to power. In his video on YouTube, Amir Zar Fadi, the Israeli dude, is, presents the idea that a crisis, a major crisis, will happen in Europe and that will produce the Antichrist. That is totally wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Daniel 7, verse 8, clearly has Western Europe being invaded. The word invaded is in capital letters. Invaded by an outside power. One, quote, horn, unquote, uh, will come up among uh, ten, ten horns. Uh, and um, the, the horn, uh, the, the invading horn is one nation. The ten horns are ten victim nations. When it says one horn will come up among the ten, that's talking about come up among as uh, 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 referring to invasion. Ten nations will get invaded by one. Actually, ten is just a uh, subset. Many more nations will be invaded. Now, what nation outside of Western Europe could invade ten or, let's say, twenty nations in Western Europe? It's got to be a superpower, and Russia is the only one, only superpowers, right next door to Europe. So Russia is the obvious choice as the, as the invading and conquering nation. The invading and conquering nation will be the beast, will become the beast. Actually, the ruler of the invading nation will become the beast, and the beast refers to the Antichrist. Now, if we discount Putin as the ruler of Russia, who is the real ruler of Russia? Well, if we discount Gorbachev's resignation back in 1991 on Christmas Day, uh, which is, uh, this is the anniversary of that so-called uh, phony uh, the resignation. If we discount that resignation, the answer is Gorbachev is still in power after all these years. He's 87 years old. And uh, so he wants to have at least a short time uh, ruling Western Europe and uh, claiming to be God. The Antichrist will rule Western Europe and so if Gorbachev conquers Western Europe, that makes him the Antichrist. Uh, which means he will bomb America at the same time. Because any Russian invasion of Europe would not be realistic if Russia lets America come to Europe's aid, which is what America is obligated to do because of uh, its membership and leadership of NATO the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. No, no, no. Any Russian invasion of Europe automatically means the Russian attack on America, a preemptive nuclear attack. Now, how can Russia bomb us without getting destroyed by our retaliatory arsenal? Easy. Russia ended the Cold War gave up Eastern Europe, etc., in the late 1980s for one reason only, to get us, America, to disarm. I'm saying disarm, uh, think of it in capital letters. Over the last 30 years, the USA has disarmed steadily till now our arsenal is but a mere shadow of its former glory. Our disarming is part of the fulfilling of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9 through 11. It says, quote, They will believe the lie uh, told by the Antichrist. That's in parentheses. 
uh, parentheses, told by the Antichrist, and then, quote, they will perish, unquote. This is how it will play out. Russia, number one, Russia changes superficially into a democracy. That's the big lie. Number two, America foolishly believes the lie and disarms uh, as a response to uh, believing that lie. Number three, Russia bombs America after America has disarmed enough so that our retaliatory uh, strike can be shot down by Russian interceptors called ABMs, anti-ballistic missiles. When will Russian attack on America materialize? I was thinking it would happen today, Christmas Day, uh, 2018. But now, uh, uh, but since I developed that theory and made a video about it and put it on YouTube, I looked back, I took another look at my old video on YouTube about Pentecost 2018 as the time of the Russian attack and the rapture, which happens together. I've decided that Pentecost is the right time of year. I was wrong about the year, but Pentecost is the right time of year. Uh, so I'm reverting back to Pentecost and switching the year to 2019. So forget Christmas Day 2018. Check out my video, uh, Pentecost 2018, as the time of the rapture and the Russian attack and uh, just uh, uh, um, substitute 2019 for 2018. Why do I claim that this particular theory is very impressive? It combines the three rituals uh, done by the high priest on Yom Kippur uh, with the three feast times, the three big feast times that the Torah, uh, the law of Moses says that uh, all the males are supposed to assemble uh, at the uh, temple, the central temple in Jerusalem. P.S. The tribulation will only be the time between Pentecost and the next uh, feast time in the Torah, which is the Feast of Tabernacles, uh, which is the five months. And uh, this is confirmed in Revelation chapter 9, verse 5 and 10, which specifically states five months. Five months. Uh, now, why don't more people see that, uh, Revel uh, that Daniel 7, verse 8, where it says, come up among, why don't they see that, why don't they see that this means the invasion of Western Europe from outside. Uh, it's because they hold on to the ten horns, the symbolism, uh, and try, they try to imagine uh, one horn coming up among ten. And uh, 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 it's very difficult to get invasion out of that. What I do, in contrast, is I take, I get rid of the uh, symbolism, I go straight into reality. The ten horns are ten kings according to Daniel 7, verse 24. And uh, kings rule nations. So by extension, the ten horns are ten nations. And so when it says uh, uh, ten horns, uh, 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 another horn comes up among the ten horns, what I do is I change that to uh, uh, a nation, one nation comes up among ten nations. And so that's where I can fit in the uh, theory of uh, invasion, because that's what uh, uh, an invasion would be. It would be one nation coming up among another nation, or in this case, uh, ten nations. Actually, it's about twenty. But uh, to simplify things, uh, they only uh, Daniel 7, verse 8, only uh, speaks of uh, ten. It's a subset. Let me reiterate that when it says, come up among them, uh, that, it, that describes what an invasion would be. And so we do have a solid rock, a rock-solid case for saying that Daniel 7, verse 8, is talking about invasion of Western Europe 
And like I said before, uh, Russia is the only nation uh, powerful enough and predatory enough and near enough to carry that out. And also, they would have to be able to knock off the United States. Only Russia can do that. They would have to knock off the United States because otherwise they would have uh, to fight not only the nations of Western Europe, but the, the United States. Because uh, uh, as a uh, uh, leader of NATO, we would uh, go to Europe's aid. To sum up, to sum up, when you look at Daniel 7 verse 8, don't try to uh, hold on to the horns. Uh, 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 convert the horns into nations. And then you'll be able to see the logic and the um, realism of uh, uh, this verse talking about invasion of Western Europe. That's how uh, this man called the beast will come to be the ruler of Europe. It's not through some uh, crisis. Uh, it's through invasion from outside. And um, I'm going to put uh, the transcript of this video into the, the description box. So you can uh, just read the video and uh, make a copy of it and uh, put a copy onto paper because when a uh, nuclear war occurs, occurs uh, EMP will destroy the computers. You, you won't have anything. You won't be able to keep anything unless it's on paper. I suppose if you have it on a thumb, thumb, um, uh, a, a, a flash drive or something, uh, you might be able to keep it that way. You have to wrap it up with tinfoil and something like that. And uh, if I haven't said so before in this video, the tribulation will be five months. I, I, I remember now, I did say that. Five months for the trib. Take my word for it. Christ said he would shorten the trib. That's in Matthew 24, 22. So these preachers, these idiots, that say the trib will be seven years or three and a half years, they, they're, not, they're ignoring Christ's words. He said he would shorten the time. So you can't uh, take uh, uh, seven years or three and a half years because that's the unshortened time. And don't think that Christ cannot change the word, the uh, word of God. Uh, God told Abraham to sacrifice his son. But when the time came when Abraham had the dagger in his hand, uh, the angel of the Lord said, hold it. Don't, don't touch your son. Don't uh, slay your son. Don't sacrifice Isaac. That was a complete change of the word of God to Abraham. And uh, we are the descendants of Abraham. Now Abraham was willing to accept the concept of God changing his word. Now we are his descendants, so we should be able to accept the concept of God changing his written word. When Christ changes the three and a half years that's in Daniel 7, verse 25, uh, he, that, he, that's, that's part of being sovereign, the sovereignty of God. I rest my case.